You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. and welcome to the Voice of Charity. I'm Katie Breedeman, and we extend a warm hello to all who are listening on WNDZ 750 AM here in Chicago and all who are watching our live stream on YouTube and Facebook at Catholic Chicago. Last week here on the Voice of Charity, Anne Grossklaus and Ada Segura were on the show talking about Catholic Charity's domestic violence transitional housing residences, where women and often children go to start a new life and a safer, happier life. We continue that conversation today to talk about Catholic Charities Domestic Violence Service Area, um, and we'd like to talk a little bit more about care coordination, because uh, it's not just about the residences. Many women uh, uh, call us and need assistance, uh, and we tap into domestic violence providers all over the city um, and the state to assist them wherever they are. Uh, with me today is Beth Klieger, a clinical, clinical strategist, and Maria Prasik, who is an intake specialist, uh, both in Catholic Charities Domestic Violence Service Area. And we welcome you both to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for being on the show and having this important conversation today. Um, Beth, you know, we, as I said, we talked about the House of Good Shepherd in Cook County um, and the House of Peace in Lake County last week. These were secure locations uh, where women go to uh, move in and recover um, slowly, uh, but in, in very concrete ways. It's really amazing what they do at both of those residences. But I know that these transitional housing residences are just part of what Catholic Charities does. Could you please share with our audience a little bit about our comprehensive um, services uh, that help any uh, domestic violence victims and survivors? Of course. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. We're thrilled to be here today to share all the resources that we have. So I'll talk a little bit about the um, comprehensive domestic violence programming that we have through our community counseling program here at Catholic Charities. So our program pretty much has two goals. One is a direct service piece, so working directly with uh, anyone who is or has experienced um, domestic violence. And our other goal is um, outreach, training, uh, kind of education to the community. So that first piece with direct service, um, we have an intake line, which Maria answers and we'll talk a little bit more about. And there, anyone who is calling in, whether they have experienced or are experiencing violence in their lives can call and ask questions and receive uh, crisis intervention um, and safety planning. So we work with people and we always talk about the most important thing in our program is um, self-determination. We're here to uh, provide options and give information and not to make any choices for anyone. So we can help someone safety plan whether they're um, in an abusive relationship and just how to be as, as safe as possible in that relationship, um, whether someone is leaving and they want to make a plan on um, how to leave safely, since we know leaving can be a very dangerous time, um, or if someone has experienced violence um, in the past and are wanting to talk about it and process it now. Then if someone chooses to do an intake with Maria, they can either um, receive domestic violence counseling uh, and learn psychoeducation about the dynamics of domestic violence. And if someone is also maybe having other feelings or symptoms that have come from experience of violence and that trauma, uh, such as PTSD symptoms or feeling some anxiety, um, then they can also work with a uh, trained therapist on our team as well. Uh, we also have case management. So whether someone then is saying, you know, I have a goal of finding long-term housing or making a plan to make sure I have access to uh, food for my family every week, or I want to further my education or go back to school, um, then we can provide case management support to help someone accomplish those goals. Uh, and then advocacy as well. So we don't have a 
legal advocates specifically on our team, but we'll help connect uh, callers to legal advocates and also have shown up uh, for emotional support and provided some advocacy uh, for our callers and our clients who are involved in the, in the court system. We also then have support groups because we know it's really helpful to hear uh, from others who might have similar experiences, uh, not just from you know the professionals on the team. And then we also have a uh, DCFS uh, educational curriculum. You know that sometimes people have experienced violence might also be involved in the DCFS system in some capacity. And so our curriculum, someone can attend, learn, uh, and graduate and bring a certificate um, back to their DCFS case to help them advocate. And then on the other hand, those are all our direct services. Um, we have an initiative on the west side where we do outreach and training. So we do uh, training on the dynamics of domestic violence, um, talking with medical professionals on how to screen and ask patients about um, violence in their lives, knowing that that might be the only time they're in a safe and confidential setting. Um, and we work with you know, different uh, faith-based groups, different uh, nonprofit organizations to really try to raise awareness, um, how to intervene, how to be trauma-informed, and the hopes of overall um, ending violence. And, and uh, Maria, could you please share with us what are the, some of the first steps you take uh, as an intake specialist when people call? Obviously, you're probably trying to assess how the severity of their situation pretty quickly. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. So that's actually the first question on my little intake sheet is, um, are you safe right now? So that's kind of the first question. And then I just kind of open it up to, you know, how how can I help you today? So then that kind of gives them the opportunity to share, you know, whether they're in a situation where they need immediate help or if they're just interested in, you know, signing up to one of the programs that Beth just talked um, talked about. So then depending on how that answer goes, it's either I, I then focus with them on that crisis situation and we do a little safety planning Sometimes that's finding shelter or just finding a safe place or family member to stay with. Um, or if it's the intake piece where they just want to sign up for a program, then I spend like 20, 30 minutes, you know, getting that basic information and also doing crisis and safety planning as part of that. Um, just making sure that while they're waiting to get connected to a clinician, they have all the tools to kind of stay safe in the meantime. So that's kind of what the process looks like. And before we go any further, Maria, could I ask you to please share the phone numbers, both for Catholic Charities, domestic vo uh, violence uh, phone line, as well as I know there's a 24-hour Illinois hotline. Could you please share those with our audience in case they know of anybody who might need help right now? Yeah, so you think I know it off the top of my head. Here it is. <laughs> I'm the one answering it. I don't often have to give our number out. Um, so our number to get connected with our program um, is 312-655-7106. That's 312-655-7106. And then the Illinois Domestic Violence Hotline, that's the 24-hour line. Um, it's a great resource. It's, you know, people can use it to find shelter. They can use it to talk through a situation. Um, that number is 877-863-6338. It's 877-863-6338. So those are really both good resources. Perfect. Thank you, Maria. Um, and I know, Beth, mm -hmm. your time is limited with us today. You actually, I know, have to leave the show at our commercial break to go advocate for one of your clients in court. So we appreciate your time even more so this morning. Before you leave, could you please share with us a little bit about that trauma-informed therapy that I know is a key component of the counseling services Catholic Charities offers for someone who's experiencing domestic violence now or perhaps in their past um, and they're still struggling with it. Can you explain what the goals of that are and, and maybe an example of, of someone who has found success with that type of therapy? Definitely. Yeah, that's a great question. So we know that, you know, experiencing domestic violence, intimate partner violence, any kind of violence in someone's life is traumatic. There's a traumatic event. So alongside of um, wanting to provide our callers and our clients with psychoeducation and information about the dynamics of domestic violence, we also really focus on providing information and psychoeducation about uh, trauma and how trauma affects uh, the brain and body as well, so that that can help um, someone who's experienced trauma understand, you know, later on, if I'm in another moment and I have a big reaction to something that might not seem, you know, as intense in that moment, uh, kind of learning that that might have been a trigger that can trigger the, the brain to kind of respond in this fight, flight, and freeze 
mode since it has responded in that way before, um, kind of giving someone a lot of extra adrenaline and, and cortisol to, to respond in the way they are. Um, so being able to kind of learn about trauma, what that means and how you know, your brain and body are responding so that you can identify triggers, kind of plan ahead for this might be something that might remind me of a traumatic experience. Here's how I identify it. Here's how I can um, prepare for it and then cope and deal with it so that I can, you know, continue to um, function in the in kind of daily life skills and daily life things I need to get done is something that we also focus on in, in therapy. Wonderful. And could you share with us a client's story before you? I have to leave? Yeah. Let me th um, trying to think of, think of something specific. I know we have, just in general, a lot of um, clients who have utilized our kind of our long-term services, but also utilized our kind of crisis intervention. So I'll give Maria a shout out here. Something I really like is even if someone is not kind of wanting to or ready to engage in, in long-term long -term services, which is totally fine. Um, what's nice about the aspect of our kind of helpline is that uh, we can kind of stay with someone for a little bit longer. So if that safety planning isn't just happening in one phone call, maybe they want to call back again or a couple times. I know we've been able to, or if they're calling and looking for shelter and all the shelters that we you know, partner with, there really isn't space in that moment. Um, we've been able to kind of stick with somebody, even if it wasn't long-term, we've been able to kind of check in a couple days in a row and prolong that safety planning process. And we've you know, heard feedback that that has been really helpful to just have someone not have to necessarily sign up for services, but have someone for a couple days or kind of that week where that crisis is going on until they can connect to the next you know, step of their plan. What I'm hearing from both of you is how individualized your services are, how you really take the time as professionals to identify the needs of each particular caller. And I, all I can think of is what a blessing that is in, in those ladies' lives. So uh, this is a, a great conversation. And uh, Beth, I, like I said, I know you have to uh, uh, leave us, but we do thank you for your time this morning. Um, and if you'll please bear with us, we'll be back after this commercial break to continue our conversation with Maria Presek, Intake Specialist with Catholic Charities Domestic Violence Service Area. Please stay tuned. At Catholic Charities, we want to remind you that we are here for anyone who is a victim of domestic violence or anyone who has a concern about someone they think may be a victim. Domestic violence affects millions of people each year, both women and men of every race, religion, culture, and economic status. It includes physical, psychological, and emotional abuse inflicted in both subtle and overt ways. The impact on children can be devastating. If you or someone you know are victims of domestic violence and you are looking for a place for healing and recovery, call us at 773-935-3434 in Cook County and 224-430-4977 in Lake County. A safer, happier tomorrow can begin today. Welcome back. Es fabuloso verlos. Dobrze jest znowu być razem. It's good to be together again. After so many months apart, pandemic capacity limits have been lifted, and we want to welcome everyone back to church. We can all pray together again. And listen as our choirs lift their voices in song. We've been together in spirit. And now when you are ready, our doors are open wide. Nuestras puertas están abiertas de par en par. Nasze drzwi są otwarte. And we're here to welcome you back to Catholic Mass.
Catholic Charities has had the privilege of helping people in need in Cook and Lake County for more than 100 years. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our frontline workers who, despite the unprecedented challenges of the past two years, continue to excel at their jobs every day. From the warehouse staff members who pack boxes of nutritious foods for low-income seniors, to the dedicated WIC employees who have remained open for families with children under the age of five, to our volunteers and restaurant partners who ensure that meals are available for those experiencing hunger, to our service coordinators and our professional counselors who continue their vital work in innovative ways, to our food pantry staff and to all those who work at Catholic Charities Call Center, finding solutions for every person who reaches out to us for help. Charity is at the heart of all you do, and we salute you. Welcome back to The Voice of Charity. I'm Katie Breedeman, and today we're concluding a two-part series on Catholic Charities' domestic violence service area. Uh, our guests today are Beth Klieger, a clinical manager, and Maria Prasik, an intake, intake specialist um, in our domestic violence uh, counseling and case management and, and just our, our wonderful comprehensive service area. Um, and Beth had to leave, uh, unfortunately, to go uh, and assist a, a client in court this morning. But Maria is still with us. And Maria, I'd just like to learn a little bit more about what you do every day to, uh, to assist clients. Um, how is And how has the pandemic affected what you're doing? Are you seeing an increase in the number of people calling for domestic violence assistance? Yeah, so actually our program has been around for about a year and it was actually, from my understanding, kind of started in response to the pandemic numbers. So overall, we definitely saw, you know, across the country an increase in domestic violence reports and incidences during the pandemic because some of those normal stressors were, you know, increasing, as was the case for most people. But, you know, as people were quarantining together and isolated, we definitely saw increased numbers of domestic violence um, kind of happening. And so the Archdiocese responded to that by kind of investing in, in this program. So since we've been around, it's been about a year, um, and we've seen increase in calls, mostly because people are finding out we're here. Uh, I think, you know, the community of DV uh, um, service providers in the city are always glad to kind of have another partner out there because there is a need in the city this size. So um, as more people hear about us, we're seeing kind of our phone ringing a little bit more often for sure. And can you share mm -hmm. with our audience who some of those are, those providers are that we work with um, in the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois to assist domestic violence victims and survivors? Yeah, I mean, we try to stay connected as best we can with you know, the other DV service providers. Our biggest tool is actually the Illinois Domestic Violence Hotline. That's kind of our first place we turn to if someone needs, um, especially if they need shelter. Um, but the other nice thing about the hotline is they kind of, they also keep as updated as they can. So if we have a client maybe that needs some help in the north side or, you know, outside of Chicago, which we may not be as well versed and we can call the hotline and they can say, okay, in this city, we know about these programs and that can kind of help us direct someone. Um, you know, in we're kind of focused on the west side. Um, so Sarah Zen is pretty close to us. They provide a lot of great services. Um, there's also CAWC. And there's been times where, you know, maybe they have a wait list or something. So they'll send someone our way because we didn't have a wait list at the time. Or maybe um, we know that they have a class available that we're not offering at the time. So, you know, we do our best to make sure that we know it's really important with survivors of domestic violence that they get that support as quickly as they can. We don't want them on a wait list or waiting in any in any uh, for any amount of time. So if if we for some reason can't meet a need or they can't, then we try to, you know, partner in that way. And is there an average amount of time that you work with a client, Maria? Or I guess, it, as we said before the break, it's a very individualized service area, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely really depends person to person. Like Beth mentioned, there are times when someone just calls in um, in a crisis, and it might be that they just work with me for a couple hours or a couple of days. Um, if they sign up for our services, um, ideally with when you're doing therapy, you know, you like to commit you know, a couple months to it at least for, you know, to get those new routines and learning those new skills. Um, but, you know, once someone is connected with the clinician or team, they do kind of create a plan together. They set some goals with the survivor and with the therapist, and they're just kind of 
spending the amount of time that they feel is appropriate to meet those goals. So yeah, you're definitely right. It's very individualized. Well, and, and uh, I'm sure that you were closely with the House of Good Shepherd and the House of Peace, you know, to uh, maybe recommend uh, a clients, you know, either for uh, actual housing there or for use of some of their programs. Am I right? We've done a little bit of um, connecting with them. There have certainly been times when, you know, we have a family that might better be served by being in a residential space. So we have kind of made calls over there and consulted with them on some situations, definitely. And then other Catholic charities programs and services, right? If if, if someone needs is starting over and, and needs uh, the food pantry service or, uh, you know, rental assistance, what are some of those other areas at Catholic charities that, that domestic violence works closely with to help people? Yeah, family stabilization has been a really big one because, um, you know, a lot of times, like you said, they're starting over and maybe someone needs help getting into that new apartment or that new space. So family stabilization is really able to help us a lot with, you know, this first month rent deposit, furniture bank referrals, things like that. Um, those have been big ones. And we do, we're always having meetings with, you know, where are the closest food pantries? How can we get, you know, access to a clothing closet? Because when people are starting over, we want to kind of do what we can to meet those immediate needs so they can kind of focus on you know, feeling safe in their new space. So those are kind of the big ones we touch on. And sometimes there's something, a new situation will come up and we have to reach out to a different part of Catholic Charities. That's kind of the nice part about being in such a vast organization is a lot of times we have the resources, you know, within our own, within our own people. And could you share a few client stories with us of, of women that you've helped from, uh, you know, being in a very scary situation to a much more stable and safer and, and happier future? Yeah, we had actually a pretty recent one over the winter. Um, it was a mom who called in and, you know, they had been in a housing situation that felt safe, but the person um, had come back and was kind of causing them to be worried and, you know, kind of looking over their shoulder a lot. Um, this mom was incredibly, incredibly resourceful. She kind of already found where she wanted to go, and where she would feel safe. So we, at that time, kind of partnered with Family Stabilization to just help her get a couple of those moving costs covered. Um, so she was able to move that new space. And actually, we also partnered with another TV agency to get some funding to help with the moving truck. Because there's costs you don't always think about like that. Um, so they helped with the moving truck. Family stabilization helped with some of the rent. Um, and then I was just kind of the go-between person helping her keep organized. Um, she was able to move to that new location. We also were able to provide her with some toys and such because it was around Christmas time. And she was kind of in this flux and flow kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I was checking back in with her and she said, you know, my children and I were able to sleep for the first time. I slept through the night. My blood sugar has gone down. I'm just feeling like my kids can go out and play. We're not looking over our shoulders. So we don't always get such immediate results, but that was really, that was a really great one. And it did take, you know, a whole team of people working together and just kind of helping her stay organized. And you know, she was incredibly resilient on her own. We were just kind of there to support her along the way. Uh, Maria, do you also take in any calls from people in which, you know, they don't, they're in, not in a crisis situation, but they increasingly just feel uh, a tremendous amount of stress or tension in their home, and they're worried that it could escalate to that. You know, are, are, is Catholic Charities able to step in and, and speak with all of the partners in the house to de-escalate things so that, so that no violence occurs? Is that, I'm hoping that that's a, a part of what you do as well? Yeah, so those situations are a little bit more complicated. If there is any kind of violence or, you know, emotional abuse happening between partners, we often encourage people to handle that individually, actually, um, because if they try to do kind of a family counseling setting, we don't want to set anything off in counseling that might come up in the home when we can't be there to help make sure it's safe. Um, so we have had situations where someone calls in is. <clears throat> They might be saying, you know, I'm starting to see this. I'm a little worried. And usually what we encourage is like, you know, that caller would maybe work with us and we would kind of help them cope and deal with things. And then we would encourage the other partner to also be getting some of their own counseling and care. And then once they're kind of able to individually better deal with stressors and coping, things like that, then maybe they can better um, cope together on those. There is family counseling within general behavioral health, but if there's any kind of abuse going on, we always encourage that to be taken care of separately because, you know, it can be further exacerbated if they if they're in counseling together. But that's a really uh, wise, that's really wise advice to have them, if they're both realizing that things, it's not a healthy situation, individually address your issues and then see if it can be healthier together again. 
Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I also know that the the, um, the 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 West Side Domestic Violence Program um, has been having some very um, groundbreaking seminars regarding teen violence um, and teen dating. Can you share with us a little bit about that, Maria? You're you're trying to you know help uh, young adults recognize what healthy relationships are should be as they develop those. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, last month was Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. So we were really highlighting it. Um, We did kind of a community training on that. Um, We do think it's really important to uh, let people know what's happening and help teens start recognizing that. Because there are a lot of times where survivors will come to us and say, you know, this relationship started when I was a teen, you know, and it carries on into adulthood and then it becomes a domestic violence situation. So the idea we're hoping is that, you know, people will recognize, you know, kids will learn this early on. um, And then as adults, they'll be able to better recognize, okay, this isn't safe. This isn't healthy. You know, maybe I need to get some help or support um, in this relationship. Or maybe they'll, you know, be able to go into adulthood and never start relationships like that. But because we see often there's a root in those teenage years, it's good to kind of address that um, when we can. Yeah. And, and also many teens who may have had an experience in their past of witnessing domestic violence, they would be very vulnerable as well, right? As they're approaching relationships on their own as young adults? Yeah, because I mean, most children are, you know, you learn how to have relationships from what you see in your neighborhood with your peers, with your parents. Um, so sometimes it just takes some relearning on what is a healthy relationship. And, you know, these are some red flags that I should keep out, uh, keep an eye out for, definitely. And if anybody in our audience, Maria, is uh, either either listening or watching our show, is concerned for their own safety, are there are there things that you might share with them to think about uh, to assess whether it's something that they really need to act on? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, you know, if someone is kind of seeing those red flags, is to reach out for help. I mean, I think people don't always realize when you're in that situation how much help there is out there. So, you know, just even reaching out to a friend or a family member or making just a call, you know, a lot of times calling like our hotline or the domestic violence hotline, it's not a commitment that you have to get services. It's just a space to talk. I have people call all the time where they're just like, this is going on. Like, what do you think? Or, you know, is this okay? Is this normal? You know, and we can kind of talk through that or being able to talk to a safe person if you have safe people in your life. Um, You know, I don't think people need to be worried about being judged. There's a lot of really great resources out there that can support people and just talking through it. May, may I ask how many calls do you get a week, Maria, or, or a month? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, it definitely varies um, depending on the week. I, I probably get a good like four to five calls. Um, a couple of those are usually people, you know, just asking about what resources are out there. And then, you know, one to two people actually signing up for, you know, services. So it's, Yeah, that's kind of what the numbers look like. And then, you know, as we're doing community work and community outreach and meetings, or if we do those trainings on DV 101 or teen dating violence, we almost always have someone stay behind and, you know, ask us about services for themselves or services for a family member. Um, So that's why we try to get out in the community as well, because then you know, people kind of recognize us without having to call the number. Well, you're doing incredibly important work, Maria. I just wanted to share everyone what those phone numbers are again. The Catholic Charities Domestic Violence Care Coordination number is 312-655-7106. Again, 312-655-7106. And the 24-hour Illinois Domestic Violence Assistant Hotline is 877 863 863 6338. We want to thank you, Maria, um, and your colleague, Beth Klieger, for being on the show today and uh, helping us all become more informed about this vitally important service area at Catholic Charities uh, and just, uh, you know, extend our congratulations to you for all you've accomplished uh, through a very difficult year of providing this service. Thanks so much for highlighting it. We love getting this info out there, so we really appreciate it. Please keep us posted on your programs, and we'll continue uh, to make sure that they get aired with the public. Thanks so much. Thanks again. <laughs> and we invite you back again another next week for another edition of The Voice of Charity. For now, this is Katie Breedeman, and we thank you for tuning in and believing in the mission of Catholic Charities.